What is the mystery that creeps you out the most? I'll start. Five or six years ago I used to receive phone calls from an unidentified phone number whose voice was a little girl's that would ask to talk to her father. The conversation would usually go. Is my dad there? No. Today I was supposed to talk to him. Double quote. At some point the little girl would hold the phone away and it would sound like she was talking to someone else who I could barely hear before she would continue the conversation. Do you know where he is? I need to talk to him. Could you go get him? Double quote. At that point it would register in my head just how creepy and poltergeist why it really was and then I would hang up the phone. This had only happened two or three times within the year and the conversation never gone anywhere outside of this little girl wanting to talk to her dad. Edit. This was usually around 2 or 3 a.m. It's just a personal story. But this one makes me uncomfortable in my own house. I live with my mom and grandmother in an 80s built house in Oregon. One morning, around 4. 0 a.m., I got up to get a glass of water because I had cotton mouth. I walked into the kitchen to find a plate of scrambled eggs on the dining room table. My mom is a teacher and gets up pretty early for work. So I figured they were her breakfast. That afternoon I got a call from my mom on her lunch break. She asked why I made scrambled eggs and left them on the table. I said I didn't. I thought you did. She said she didn't. And had no idea where they'd come from. My nana is 93. Can't walk without her walker. And needs help even getting out of bed. She has advanced Alzheimer's. And couldn't cook a plate of eggs if she tried. I asked her that afternoon. Nana did you make eggs last night? She sat silently and refused to answer. I asked her a few more times. She was keeping a secret for someone. Or something. And the sly and displeased look on her face still gives me the creeps. That there's a possibility Kennedy was murdered by the insidious influence that infected the US intelligence community. At the highest levels. That the architects of the military industrial complex and neoconservative movement could have played a part in his assassination is spooky. The mystery of where the fuck my last bag of onion rings went. They were in my cupboard in the kitchen. But the only guy who was around at that time said it wasn't him. It couldn't have been anyone else. As they were all in lectures. And if it wasn't him. Then it's just this great big mystery. Also the mystery of why his room smelt of onion rings. And the mystery of why there was onion rings dust in his room. And finally. The mystery of what happened to that guy. In middle school. A friend and I were playing around with some pretty high grade walkie talkies his dad had brought home. You know. Just calling out to each other down the street. Having fun like kids do. All of a sudden. We decided to play around with the channel frequency. After a while we started hearing what we thought was helicopter chatter. Things about landing zones and what time to pick up certain things from the helipad. Along with the low sound of chopper blades. Neat. We thought. We kept listening. All of a sudden we heard sir. I believe we have a security breach on this channel. We're tracking it now. We looked at each other. Yeah right. This is some kind of prank. How could they know? All of a sudden, we heard a helicopter off in the distance. It being just barely visible. It looked almost like a news helicopter. Except it was painted flat white. The chatter started again. And they said a bunch of things I can't really remember about the helicopter coordinating with people on the ground. All of a sudden, we saw three black and marked vans roll by. SUVs. The kind with tinted windows. Think umbrella. They went down the block and right by us. Holy shit. Was that because of us? So we went out onto the road. All of a sudden a voice came out of the radio. Meatball 1. Meatball 1. Stay off the pasta. We were confused. This happened the second we stepped on the road. We assumed our signal was meatball and the road was pasta. We tested it about 4 more times. Stepping off. Then back. Every time we hit the road. The same message came crackling through about a second later. Needless to say. As kids we were scared shitless and had no idea what to do. We knew we didn't want to end up in those black cars though. 
so we shut off the radios and threw them off into the brush in the distance. In hindsight, it was only a few meters from us. That was pretty dumb. Comma we ran home and hid. Nothing else happened the rest of the day. I don't live near an army base of any kind. It's threads like this that make me love Reddit. I am both freaked out of some of the articles. Feel slightly more educated, granted mainly in a Wikipedia sense. But I love the wealth of information available at a whim from the most awesome community. In answer to the actual post. Every goddamn link posted here is what now freaks me out the most. To be honest. The thing that freaks me out isn't well known at all. In fact. There is absolutely no information on it. I live in a small town in Alberta. Canada and out in the rural farmland area there's this one house that you have to take about a kilometer long road to get to. The road is completely encased by wheat and trees and such and when you finally get to the house it's completely abandoned. Apparently around 10 years ago the people who lived there just left and absolutely nobody knows what happened to them. They left all their furniture. All their clothes still in the drawers. They left their vehicles. And even all the food. Since that it's been destroyed by the weather and random people vandalizing but the weird thing is that on their car that is still in the driveway. There is about 25 bullet holes in the side of the car. Big holes. Not buckshot pellets or even a pistol or. 22. Like. Automatic weapon holes. It's pretty creepy. Not exactly an old famous mystery but still gives me the creeps. It was an old bed. My girlfriend bought it at a rundown furniture shop for $100 and they drove it over in a minivan later that day. Some time shortly after she bought it. It started happening. I don't know how else to explain it except that when you were lying in the bed. And it was totally dark. There would be a scratching at one end. And the sheet would start to pull toward it. The bed and box spring were on the floor so there wasn't an under the bed for anything to be hiding in or a frame to be catching the sheet. It felt just like when a cat is using the, the corner of a bed as a scratching post. Like there were small snapping sounds when the sheets and mattress fabric were released from whatever was pulling on them. Very audible. And you could feel it. We hadn't mentioned it with anyone yet when a friend went to take in a nap in the GF's room then returned 15 minutes later saying. There's something in your room and it's scratching at the bed. We tore that room apart multiple times looking for a mouse or an incredibly strong bug or anything. We searched the mattress and looked under the piece of fabric that covers the box springs. Her room was small. We never found anything. After moving it happened once again. She called and had the store switch out her mattress because it was broken. They did. Scratching pulling stopped. And those terrifying nights of pulling at the sheets that were begging tugged off the bed remains a mystery to us all. A summer camp in Vermont. Our camp moved to its current property in 1986. The property we were moving to and that is our current location was a girls camp. But it was inexplicably abandoned. They left working trucks. A tractor. Canoes. Paddles. Etc. There is graffiti all over camp from girls who stayed at the camp. Shit like Betsy 56. 57. 58 inches but there is also some very creepy stuff. A lot of the equipment that they left behind we still use. Such as the canoes and the paddles. There are lots of ghost stories made up by counselors about why the girls camp closed. But in reality. Nobody knows. I've looked it up to try and find out. But I can hardly find any information that the camp ever existed. To make things very creepy. There was a wedding at our camp. And this old 90 year old woman was being driven in. And she kept on insisting I've been here before and could even identify where buildings would be before she saw them. She said she had never been to a girls camp before. Turns out that before it was a girls camp. In the 1920s. The campground was actually a sanitarium. And at a young age this women had been sent there for some reason. I'm going through something right now that is creeping me out and to most of you I will sound crazy. No doubt. I'll start by saying I don't believe in ghosts. I'm a rational. 39 year old woman who is extremely skeptical and the type of person who needs to to see it to believe it. Apostrophe. I gave birth to my daughter two weeks ago. When I was about three weeks away from giving birth. 
I would smell cigarette smoke in our house, we don't smoke. At the time. I put it down to a weird pregnancy thing, after all. Pregnancy hormones can cause some weird symptoms. But the smell was so strong, as if someone was sporadically blowing smoke in my face. This never happened before then. Now that my daughter is here. The smoke smell lingers everywhere. Especially over her crib. My mother-in-law was recently here and she could smell it too. As a matter of fact. I purposely didn't bring it up to her and she was the one to bring it up and complain about the smell. My sister-in-law also asked about it without my mentioning it. My husband can't smell it. I have no explanation for this, all I know is that the smell is the same smell of the roll-up cigarettes my father smoked before he died in 1998. It isn't constant, just occurs randomly throughout the day-night. One minute I can't smell a thing and the next. The air is heavy with the scent of my dad's rolling tobacco. Right over near my baby's crib. Okay. So I have been thinking about this ever since it happened to me about 10 years ago. It's not traditionally scary. But it freaked me out. I hope I can get some sort of an answer here. I was in Idaho with my friend and her mom. Staying at my friend's aunt's house. Well. One night my friend and I were going to bed. I turned facing the large window to turn off the light. The blinds were down. But slightly open. About a minute later. An extremely bright light comes from the window. It looks like lighting. Kinda. It's really neon yellow but jagged like lightning. And flashing. It looked like to me it was right on the window. Now this lasts for maybe 30 seconds before I jumped up and ran to the door. It might be a good time to say it was a clear night. No clouds. My friend says she saw it too. But in the small window kinda above our heads. I don't know if she did. But when I ran she did too. Okay so. The bedroom we were in was divided by a wall from the living room where her mom was at. The living room window was just as big as the window in the bedroom and on the same wall. It also was completely open. No blinds. Curtains. The space between the windows might be 12 feet. Well. She didn't see any light. That's really it. I have no idea what this light was. Spontaneous lightning that lasts for 30 plus seconds and is right next to a window on a clear night. I hope someone knows what I'm talking about. TL. DR strange lightning like light appeared from my window. On a clear night. Never beginning. It makes my brain do backflips. Never ending I can get. You know. Existence's end will never come. Sure. It just keeps going and going. But. Existence never began? Or if it didn't begin? What was before it? Some kind of existence had to have been. Otherwise. How? There never was a beginning. And existence always just was and is. Ah. Yeah. The never beginning is something totally weird and inexplicable that I pondered about from a very young age. Black Holes. I'm currently reading Hawking's A Brief Story of Time. They are so mind-bogglingly massive that we mere mortals can't start to comprehend. They suck everything even light so we can't actually see them inside them they have something we call a singularity which is scientific jargon for we don't know what the fuck it is and we probably will never know for sure. Back when I was 12 years old. There was a kind of a UFO craze led by some cult that claimed the UFOs would be coming on a certain date. As the date got closer. There was more and more media hype and I remember everyone was talking about this at school and in the news. On the night slated for the UFO. A lot of people in my neighborhood gathered in the street and it became kind of a social event. I was just a kid and the idea was pretty scary so I stayed in. Very late into the night I looked out the window and the moon was pale white and spinning like a plate on its edge. I ducked under the covers and fell asleep at some point. The next day. No one seemed to know what I was talking about or even remembered the UFO craze that was so popular the day before. No one remembered anything about a cult or gathering in the streets. Nothing on the news. This was before the internet so I could not check online for anything. I don't know if this is cool for you guys or not. But it's creepy for me. There are times that when I dream. It happens in real life. I get like 5-10 deja vu's per month. But that's not the creepy part. 
I've been writing a dream journal every since I got interested with lucid dreaming since 2009. There are several occasions that things happen in real life that was in my dream journal exactly the way IT was portrayed. Last Sunday was my recent one. We went in a karaoke bar with some of my new friends new means I just met them at that day. In my dream. I remember we went inside the room. Played some songs and we had to move out of the room because something was wrong. But I didn't actually know why we had to go out. And I woke up wondering who are these guys? Well. It happened in real life, exact number of people. Same room. Same song being played and we also have to move out of the room because the karaoke machine won't register the microphone. I checked my dream journal just to be sure it's legit. And it was, which is my first ever evidence that my dream came true. I'm not saying that I'm supernatural and shit like that but I'm afraid that I would have a dream that would turn out to be a nightmare and chances are it might happen in real life. I have no control over this. And it happens every once in a month or two. So far. No lotto numbers showed. TL. DR. I dream shit. Happens in real life. Not an official. Well known mystery. But it still creeps me out to this day. I live in a house that is surrounded by miles of forest preserve. When I was much younger. My cousins and I would like to go out exploring in the woods. One day. We happened on this old. Abandoned looking shack. It was pretty dilapidated. But I think at some point someone must have been living in it because there were tattered drapes hanging from the windows and the front door was slightly ajar. There were really old. Rusted kitchen utensils in front of the shack. I remember a measuring cup and a fork and butter knife distinctly. Bizarrely. In the clearing behind the shack. There were these weird. Stone monuments. The best way I can describe what they looked like is that they were similar to those fake hives that you might see at a honey farm. Except for we slowly creeped around back and saw that they were completely solid. I have no idea how this shack or these things got in the woods. Because there is absolutely no way anyone would ever be able to drive a vehicle back there as there wasn't any paved path and the trees are pretty dense. It was a sunny day out. But I remember as soon as we came across the area this overwhelming. Foreboding sense came over me. Even thinking about it now is terrifying me. I have no idea what's come of it. I am way too terrified to make my way back there again. Colon. Shudders. I hope that somehow it's been destroyed. Suffice to say I am always on the jumpy side when it's dark out because I fear that one day a crazed person is going to come out of those woods from the shack. Ah. My friend. I'll call her Jane has a friend who owns a business. It's a small business with just the owner and one or two others, assistant receptionist. Weird things had been happening in the office. And the business owner of course thought the place was haunted and hired a group of ghost hunters to investigate. My friend Jane. Very skeptical. Asked to join. So she was there when the weird stuff happened. Jane said that the ghost hunters went through the business. Which is in an old house with their instruments. Proclaiming hot spots and cold spots and whatnot. Jane was unimpressed. Then. At the end of the session the ghost hunters decided to put a radio on scan AM and ask the ghost, or whatever, questions. Skeptical Jane freaked out as the first question was asked. Has anybody died in this house? And very clearly on the radio they heard six people. Now. Apparently the radio was scanning AM stations. So you could hear static and even talking intermittently. But when the questions were asked the answers were very clear. Ghost hunters. How did you die? Voice. Fire. Business owner. Why are you messing with my staff? Voice. My staff. Double quote. There were more questions with answers. But I wasn't there and don't know them. But Jean says at the end the ghost hunters said that they should stop. As the voice seemed to be getting agitated. The business owner said. Let's ask one more question. And the voice on the radio said very loudly. No more questions. Double quote. My friend Jean said that she was genuinely frightened. And she even seemed kind of disturbed when she told me the story. She's still a skeptic and says there's got to be an explanation. But none of us know what that is. And it is very much a mystery that creeps me out. And another thing. 
I read this a long time ago in Stephen King's book Dance Macabre. I've never been able to find much about it online. The Mystery of Little Miss Nobody on the 6th of July. 1944. The Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus was giving a performance in Hartford, Connecticut. Before 7,000 paid customers. A fire broke out. 168 persons died in the blaze and 487 were injured. One of the dead. A small girl thought to be 6 years old. Was unidentified. Since no one came to claim her. And since her face was unmarred. A photograph was taken of her and distributed locally and then throughout the U.S. Days passed. Weeks and months passed. But no relative. No playmate. No one in the nation came forward to identify her. She remains unknown to this day. Double quote. This may seem mundane but it creeps me out still. About 5-6 weeks ago I come home from work to find my dog had torn up my laptop cord, not unexpected. I went back to crating her after she chewed up some other things. Anyway the cable is fucked on both ends. The part that disconnects and goes to the wall and the part attached that goes to the laptop. I pick up the pieces and throw it out. Pick up a universal power cable from Walmart and go on with my life. The creepy part. Three days after this happens I'm cleaning and find behind the cushion on the love seat, where the old power cable would normally be strung across, the same fucking power adapter fully intact. Not some generic one. It's the Sony Veo cable. Identical. Completely intact. I've never owned another one. None of my friends do that I know of and I didn't even tell anyone about my dog chewing up the old one. I threw it away just to see if it would magic itself back in the house but so far no. I went to a math and science school in Arkansas. Our dorms were an old hospital. And my first year there. I was on the 6th floor. One night. Either I was dreaming it or I was really living it. I woke up, on the top bunk, about 5 inches from the ceiling. I looked down at my bed. And literally just fell onto it. My roommate looked over from his computer to me as I fell onto the bed. And said something. I fell asleep without remembering what he said. The next morning. While waking up. My roommate asked to do. You remember anything from last night? I knew what I thought happened. And couldn't have been sure it was a dream. So I said no. He replied. You. Don't remember floating two feet above the bed like that chick in Ghostbusters? Double quote. Yeah. Freaky things happened at that place. Okay this will probably get buried but something happened to me when I was younger that I think fits perfectly here. I was in the fourth grade. Sitting in class on a Monday. My teacher was teaching a lesson and just as the bell was about to ring the teacher gave us an assignment that was due on Wednesday. So I go home that day and I figure whatever the work is due Wednesday I'll do it tomorrow. So I play video games all day and then go to bed. I wake up and go to school the next day and everything is going normal until the teacher says that it's time to hand in the homework. Being very confused I inform the teacher that he said the work was due on Wednesday and that we all still had a day to do it. Everyone in the class including the teacher gave me a weird look and the teacher told me it was Wednesday. I have no recollection of that Tuesday. No idea what happened. TL. Doctor I skipped a day of my life and have no idea what happened. There is an old story in my family about a stone that my grandmother and her sister, my great aunt, acknowledged but refused to tell. My mother was apparently told the story at some point but also refuses to tell. Saying that it's something that she dreams about from time to time and that she wishes she had never heard. I get the distinct sense they all intend to take it to their graves.